Hello. Pixie again. Um, yeah, I was doing some um, theory work, I think, and um, seems interesting that I've um, may have made a little discovery. It's um, basically uh, to do with time, the time continuum and um, time travel, and that uh, you can't go backwards in time not unless you can pack and crush time. And um, you, you basically you're trying to erase it, trying to move backwards. Um, in essence, we're like the thread that moves between this material universe. And um, and because of that, yeah, basically, um, you can you can loop time. So you loop it back on itself, and the only way we can do that is possibly um, amping up the frequency so that you, you kind of hack reality and then looping it backwards, so trajectorying it forward in time and then um, sending it backwards that way, I guess. And that's, that's the only way you can do that. Um, and very much like um, the needle and thread, that the um, the cord in essence is what you are. So you've got this consciousness that you're um, that flows in a kind of linear, but however it's um, it's able to be folded through dimensions. Um, so there's not really a restriction. We're so alert when driving around. Um, there's not really a restriction for the thread itself, but the actual, um, if you, in essence, the needle um, is the body, and the only way you'd have to shift the body with it, so you'd have to create a kind of um, bubble. Um, shift, shift that mass and uh, um, energy, and then, like I say, loop it back through time. And it won't actually be on a, on the exact same um, um, basically uh, time. So it will be um, oh, that's fine. it will be uh, somewhat different. And then if you also try to do it again several times, you're looping through things. You create a kind of knot, and that would be the Mandela effect um, that you've compressed everything into one spot. Like if you like Grand or Doug. Groundhog Day, maybe it's pulling the knot apart. Um, just keep looping it back because you're stuck on the, some pinnable point in time. But it's um, um, yeah, it's that it's that connection really that's um, somewhat different. Is that people's understanding of time is that they can just sort of there's a way to pull it backwards, I think you'd only really accelerate it forwards, bending it through different dimensions, and then returning it back to, um, to basically go through like a subspace, or, or what you would, there would be um, hyperspace, and then but to travel in the opposite direction. So you'd have to fall out of the known reality you are, and then fold backwards in time, to come back to an earlier point where, whereby everything around you is in its in a sort of earlier um, earlier state. However, you are you you are because everything created the situation by which you went back in time, and the um, and paradoxes created from that may create a new different timeline, which might collapse the old one into the new one. Um, and then what you may have is just like um, mass amnesia or something like that, and. Um, where people go, what happened to that day, or some re-edited version of reality, or you might say, hang on, when did Mandela die? I can't remember. Is he still alive? You know, or Michael Jackson. I didn't know. He just phased out of um, out of the, the limelight and disappeared altogether. It could be that Michael Jackson died many years ago, and they just um, were using holograms or using something else to make money out of him. Story. Um, 
what reality is. Uh, play things like CERN though, it means that you want... You could, there's, there's an idea about if you send several particles, one particle explodes and generates the, the hole, and the other one seeds through it. Um, and that would possibly, that kind of thing might create a wormhole or a time tunnel or something. Um, because you need to stabilise it by shoving something that keeps it, almost keeps it open. Um, and it would be the, um, the particle that doesn't belong in that in that place is, is um, sort of, um, until that's moved or dislodged, it will keep that gate open. So you just need to build up around that to create the tunnel. Um, so yeah, that's interesting stuff. And at least I got a better bearing and understanding of what, how time works. Um, so it's time looping, time stitching, um, stitching the fabric of time. And there's, there's also hidden stuff in our language, we just don't realise it's all there. Like um, they say, a stitch in time uh, save nine. Now sign, no, nine is completion in the um, numerology, um, or nine itself is seems to be uh, the root number for uh, circles. Um, if you do any sort of uh, chaos maps, then where you add like uh, three six zero and you get nine, um, or you add one eighty to one one eight zero. And you you end up basically with um, you end up with a nine as, as, a, as a digit, so it will come down to one point. Um, one point in time. So the nine is a significant number for many reasons. So. So that's it, and um, what we are, like I say, the consciousness can flow anywhere. However, the vessel, or what we choose in our form, is merely the, is merely the needle on the thread, which can influence and have an impact on this reality. But as you know, a piece of thread on a, on a piece of cloth doesn't really have much impact. Um, so you need you need the tool. So our body's a tool to um, create the change. And um, and other other sorts of realities, I think. So I mentioned about the knot, how it might tie if you go back through several points in time, and you you come in from different dimensions, that you could probably create some type of knot. And now, how would the universe resolve that? Yeah, maybe it would realign the way the way things are. Like I mentioned, Mandela could create some other issues. Potentially could te cause this tear that you wouldn't want to do either. Um, what happens when you get a piece of thread and you put it one way in two different directions? Um, the result is you have a really tight knot. If you keep pulling to some point, it might snap. And then one bit of thread's got the knot on, and the other bit's got a massive gap between the two. So, um, definitely don't want something like that. I don't think you can tear space apart. Um, because it would be the doomsday uh, event. Uh, basically, the space-time would get to a point and then um, the space-time consciousness would get to a point and um, and then you would go beyond that, not unless it heals itself and restitches itself back into another thread. Um, so yeah, so the application of what you know about knitting um, and <laughs> sewing and thinking of um, how reality could relate to that and um, it's quite, uh, quite out there. It's the same way as your computers. You can you can basically relate computers to your mind, having memory programs that are basically around your emotional states of mind. Um, when you go to uh, when you go to work, you might be able to operate a different system. You may act in a particular way. Um, when you're outside of work, you may be more yourself. Some people can't actually um, switch off from work, so that's are they stuck in a are they stuck in a program or you know these kind of things? They can all relate to how you're. It basically your mind works. In the same way that driving I can talk, my mind, a chunk of my brain could be somewhere else. Um, I only really need to tune in when I 
I've got things that require extra concentration. Anyway, this is Pixie sign off. Have a great day and speak to you soon.